oftentimes when we glass blowers want to go put in color into a different piece that we're working on is to use this glass frit and my preference is to use a glass frit because a glass frit uh, if you just use some of it and not too much of it will end up uh, will end up looking really cool so you just dip it in uh, to the hot glass and then we're gonna go kind of bake it in baking it in and then we're gonna go kind of recombine this rod and try to make some swirls as we're going here. So now I have this colored rod right here and it has just a couple color swirls and I can use that to start making the base of something like a dolphin. So first thing in glass blowing, you gotta make a gather of glass. Oh, my name is Jesse Reich. I'm a candidate for state rep in the 1st Middlesex District. Glass blowing is a little hobby that I picked up when I was, and when I was a chemist at Texas A&M, we had our own, it was a big enough department where we actually had our own glass blower. And he, uh, he would always make these little creatures. So he'd, you know, he'd be hard at work making glass and then he'd have, uh, like for the, for the students and the professors. And then he'd get frustrated because something wouldn't be working and so he'd just sit back and make like a little uh, creature for some of like the, the glass lab techs. One of the things that I've tried to do in my life is try to collect as many cool skills as I can. I, uh, even if I don't master them, I feel like it's, a, it's important to know how to do different things and especially be able to do different things for myself. You know, glass melts. It's actually, it's, it's sort of in between being a solid and a liquid. If you look at these old churches, that are in lots of different communities, even in uh, the United States, some are old enough. You can actually see that the, uh, the glass is thicker at the bottom than it is at the top. And that's because over time, it's a liquid and it's been slowly, slowly, slowly dripping down. Uh, gravity is pulling the glass down and so it's actually thicker at the base than it is at the top. And so what I'm doing is I'm heating it and that makes all the molecules a little bit freer and as they get a little bit freer, they can move around a little bit more. And I'm just trying to help them uh, move to places where I want them to be. Part of the trick of glass blowing is not to go, is not to go uh, too hot, too cold, too fast, too slow just really try to make it so that it's just right because if you get it too hot it'll flow just like a liquid and that's a problem the thing that glass blowing has taught me without any doubt is patience endless patience now this it's it's not easy to work glass you know and this has taken me uh, years to just become an amateur you know, so it's like, it's a real labor of love to, to work on this and try to, um, try to get better at it. But without a doubt, it just takes, it just takes some patience and some real love of this and, um, it takes working hard too. It's still pretty hot, so I don't just want to don't want to go grab it just yet but you know each time that I get back into this I remember just a little bit more about what it is that I'm doing <laughs> 